Hi guys and welcome to another video here in our community. Today I just want to explain to you a little bit about what is JSON uh, data is and how it's important on make.com and how you should actually use it on your automation. So this is actually something that will appear uh, when you are doing automations in make and uh, you know it can be a little bit tricky on the beginning, a little bit difficult to understand but when you start using it on your automations you actually see you know the actually you know the, the activity that you can do and you know the actions you can do with JSON and it's really helpful especially you know to change the format of your of your data and you use to use better the data that you actually have on the outputs because most of the time some of the apps where especially when you're doing like scraping uh, when you're doing AI content and you know, generating outputs on ChatGPT and so on I will show you some use cases that you actually need to shift to JSON in order to get specific data and to work with that data. So, you know, I just actually pull out what JSON is because it's kind of difficult to explain, but basically it's just a format where it's easy to read for both humans and machines. So it's just like uh, a structure that allows you to understand exactly what is the data inside and is actually good for the machine, or in this case for the automation, to understand, you know, what are the values, what are the fields, for each step or for each data, we can say that way, okay? So here you can see an example of a JSON object or a JSON format, and basically just like a customer, you know, that says John Doe, the age is 30, uh, the street, the city, so this is just an example that ChatGPT gave to me, but imagine that you have, you know, that you have a business and you have your CRM with customers, right? So probably we'll have their, the names, you know, their, their address, how much they spend with you, what was the product they bought, and a lot of information there, right? So you can actually export that as JSON format in data and all the customers will be like this one, okay? So every single line is an item from, uh, a data item from your CRM, right? So then what you can do is actually a, a lot of things on make to actually grab this data and transform it and use it whatever you want. If you just want to use the name, if you want to use everything. So I'll show you how to use it on make, but basically, Again, the simple format is it's re easy to understand for you and for the machine and it's a format that everybody can understand, okay? Uh, so basically, I will give you here an example of what we can do on JSON. I just put some, some examples here for you to see and I will show you what are like the big cases that we personally use and I think you'll use the most because even some of the options here for JSON I never use it and I don't need and I don't think I will ever need to use them but I will show you a little bit what they are and what you need for okay so I just started with a variable just for us to play around here so I just added the exact same example that uh, ChatGPT gave me so this is a JSON format okay and now I will try to play around and show you what you can do with this data okay so basically I think the biggest thing you can do and what you'll use the most is parse JSON okay so when you get this data from an app or from ChatGPT or whatever, imagine now that I want to use or you know send, for example, for a Google Sheet, just the name and the hobby, because this is a full chunk of output, right? This is a bundle. This is like an array from Make. So imagine that I just want to grab specific data from JSON. So the only thing you need to do is parse JSON. So this is actually, if you go to the plus sign and you click JSON, these are all the scenarios that you can do with, uh, with that. So you can aggregate to JSON. So basically, if you have different bundles with this format, so if I have more than one in bundle, like imagine that you are getting data from your CRM and you get customer one, customer two, you can aggregate that in just one JSON uh, formula or one JSON data, and then you can parse the JSON I will show you and play around with the data. So this is pretty explanatory. The convert JSON to XML, I will show you a little bit. I don't use it to be honest. It's basically just transforming JSON format, this format that I showed you on an XML, which is basically a little bit like HTML, but I never use it. I don't find any use cases for that. Uh, to the moment, create JSON. You can actually create a different JSON than what you have. And then with the proper uh, data structure that you want, I'll show you in a second. Parsation, with, as I said, is the most used one. And then you can also transform uh, to JSON. So if you have another format, another text or object, you can actually transform it into JSON. Uh, so as I said, you have this data here, okay? And if this is the parse one, so if I open up the parse one, you, only, you can actually create the data structure. I will not create for, for parse because I already have this one and I want you to see the full data. But you just have to come here and click the code. So I choose the code from previous step and I click save, okay? Let me just unlink this 
and I'll, I'll run for you so you can see it, you can see what the data is. So as you, as you know, we have this code here, okay, all the code, and now you can see the difference. So now the bundle actually gave me the steps, so name, age, the obbies I can open up, the address is all here. So everything is layered with data. So now if I want to, for example, let me just give you an example. If I want to add some another variable and I just want to grab the name, I can do it, right? So I can set a variable and imagine that I just want the name. Now, as you can see, when I click on variable, as you can see, all the data is separated. So now I can just use the name. Okay, so now I can even put like a chat GPT module here and say, hey, uh, give a, I don't know, give like an open line for my email about where they live. And I can just, here is the name, here is the city. So I don't need the other data and he will create it. So this is a good way to pick a bunch of data in a JSON format and then it splits out the data by chunk. So again, now I can save the names. I'll not do that. I will close it. But now you can see the difference, right? Then you also have the create JSON. Okay, so create JSON basically is if you, I don't want all this data, but I want to work with a J, just like a part of that. So imagine that I want to change a little bit the, the, the JSON itself. I can just create the data structure. So here I already created. So let me see if I can delete and open a new one again. So if I click create JSON, you see here only appears this. So I need to, or I choose a test, which I already made. But if I click add here, it asks me to make a new one. So test two. And then there is two things you can do. You can do it manually and add items, or you can generate using the code. Okay, so for example, if I click generate and I put the sample code here again, which is the same one, it will give me the same uh, outlines. Okay, but if for example, let me just show you here. If for example, I remove, let's say, let's remove the address. Okay, the street here. Okay, and only so I, I want to remove the, the, the street. Okay, so let's generate. As you can see, now it generates me, asks me where the uh, when I want to create the JSON. So now I have separate items. I want to create the code. Okay, so this is to create the code. So basically, I'm going back and forth. Okay, so here I have a code. I parse it and I split it in the items. Now I have split items. I want to go back to the code, but in a slightly different format because I don't want to the street. So now here I can come here and the name, you know, the default value here will be text. And as you can see here, the age, the number, the default values, and so on, I can click save here. Okay, so I just save the structure, and now I can give the name, the age, the hobbies, the city, and the zip code. So there is no street. So now I can come here. Okay, the name will be dynamic, so it will be John. Age, uh, admin, I will leave it empty. I don't need it. And then on the hobby side, I can actually even add one. Let's add one. And then the city and then the zip code. So now if I run it, let's save it. And I run everything for you to see. You can see now it create me a new code. So now, okay, if I go back again, I, I can parse these now and I will have the items again. So now I choose this one, which is the new code. And if I run everything, you'll see now I have all the address and all that. So separate by item. So as you can see, I jump around. So I jump from code to separate, separate to code, and code to separate, okay? So this is really important for you to manage data. Again, it can be a little bit tricky to see this video. So I want to be super basic on this stuff because I will say the majority of the use cases will be when you are scraping and you have HTTPS requests and all the data comes in JSON formats and uh, in AI as well, you will use a lot and I'll give you some examples, okay? So as you can see, guys, this is pretty much the one that we use parse and create. Again, you can then aggregate if you have more than one JSON uh, and in one, one like big uh, JSON format and JSON formula. Uh, you can then transform to XML. I don't use it as much as I told you. And that's pretty much, and then you can transform like an object to X uh, JSON code. But I will say these two are the main ones, especially the parse because you want to grab separate items. Okay. So let me show you a different examples. Okay. So in this case, let, let me go first to the one that I think it's, it's important for you to understand. When you use AI, okay, because that's what you hear when you use AI, okay? In this case, we have open router, but it's the same. It just allows us to use modules, every model, like Claude, ChatGPT, and so on. But imagine that you have ChatGPT, okay? In this case, let me show you one thing, okay? So basically what I wanted, I want him to every single day to research two news about AI 
and give me in a JSON format. And why did I use JSON format, guys? This is really important for you to understand. If I ask the ChatGPT, give me two ideas of AI news, he will give me a text. Here are two ideas, one and two, but everything will be on the same text. So imagine then I want to send those two ideas separately to a Google Sheet. I cannot do it, right? Because the, tech, the, the entire output that the ChatGPT created all the text is here are two ideas, one and two. So everything is together, okay? So in this case, if you ask ChatGPT, please give me the result in an XJSON format, as you can see here, and I put it an example. So I want all the, all the everything separate. So I want the title one, description one, title two, description two, okay? It will give me in a JSON format, then I can parse and use separately. So then I can just create a content for, uh, title one and just description one, title two, you know what I mean? So you can separate. This is really important in AI, guys, because as I said, if your output has different layer, different items, you want to use just one item, you need to always ask for JSON format, okay? In that case, you'll not be able to use it. So this is a case that we use a lot for JSON, is when ChatGPT tell you something. Uh, this is the, as I saw, this is the title, this is the descriptions, and now you just want to one title, or you want to split the description okay and let me run for you to see it i'll run uh let me see if i can run all of them let me just try to run it it will stay it will take a little bit because this is open router so have all the modules uh so let, let, let's see if it goes and i will show you what is the difference okay guys because then it goes to Airtable. this is just part of our content hub so as you can see here let me go here if you go to choices one message this is actually, we are using perplexity, by the way. So as you can see, guys, this is all the format he made on JSON. So he creates the title one, and then the description is right here. So description one, title two, and description two, okay? But as you can see, this is just one output. So if I want to put this on a Google Sheet, it will put everything. So how do I split? Now I have a JSON format. I can just parse JSON. And I just choose there, okay? And if you see here, now I have everything separated. I have the title, I have the description, title two, description two. Now, if I connect to our table, you can see that I chose. So I chose title one, this is actually, let me just put it again. Title one, description one, and as you can see, now I separated, I create two records. One with title one, title two, oh, well, title one, description one, and then the other one with title two and description two. And as you can see, this is how you use JSON format. Now I can manipulate the data or with, that was on the output of the app. So that's how JSON is important, guys, okay? That's why, as I told you, that the parse JSON is the one that we use the most, okay? The other one that I can uh, show you really quickly, let me see if I can show you, is just, let me see if I can run this one. I'm not 100% sure. This was just a Google Maps scraping we did for another video. Okay, maybe there is nothing in here, but I can just run this module on it and search. So let me see if I can search uh, plumber in New York, I think. Let me see if it runs the API because we are testing some scraping stuff. So as I said, the JSON format is really good for, um, so let me see if it run data. Okay, so as you can see, this is a long string. Okay, guys, super long, okay? But I can see that this is on JSON format. So I can parse the JSON. So let me just, and see if I can I just unlink this because, and I can just run these two. Okay, let me just do like this, guys, because I don't have the entire data. So let me see. I need to grab this all this stuff. Let me just grab it for you because I I I need to put some data there because I try, I, I'm testing manually. So let me put a variable here that says. Set a variable, okay, let me push it here. And let's push, put all that stuff here and put maps data. Okay, and let, let's parse the JSON, okay? Parse JSON, issues the maps data, okay? So now if I run it, you can see that has all the data, guys. So this is um, Google Maps search number one, Google Maps search number two. And if I open up, you can see that all the data is separated exactly as I wanted because I want to use different stuff. So I have the categories, I have the working hours here. So it's scraped 
one by one, but if I don't use the pers JSON, all the data will be on a super messy, as you can see here, super messy stuff. So when you tem every time you see like this format, again, this needs to be a little bit, get used to it and experience, but when you start seeing all of this kind of data, super crank clunky and so on, just try always to parse that because then you maybe find out that you have all the data separate by, um, you know, by categories, by collections and bundles and all that stuff. And then I can use, as you can see here, I will not show you, but after this, what this automation does is that it grabs the website URL and then goes to Apollo and tries to find an email and I can send an email and I just scrape restaurants in New York, right? Uh, but that's how you use person. Okay, guys, let me just push again all this stuff, okay? So this is probably the two biggest uh, uses of JSON and that's how you use JSON guys. Again, this is a little bit more for advanced stuff and you need to test a lot, but I just wanted to show you a little bit what is JSON, what you can do with it. And every time you are scraping and you see like, oh, this is kind of messy data, try to post JSON and you start seeing that the items will catch up and you can just use them individually. Okay, so I hope this was a helpful video guys and I'll see you on the next one.